Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending August 15th. This week I had one article sent in by Bob, 1954 Shadow, which gives me a little time to do uh, some hands-on stuff I've been wanting to do for the TDD Report, so as soon as I finish with this article, I'll get on with that part. This is from Gizmodo.com. There's a new device in the works over at DARPA, the agency known for pushing the technological envelope with mind control prosthetics and drone launching submarines. This latest innovation, the vacuum tube. You might remember it from the first time humans invented it way back in 1904. What this talks about is the fact that vacuum tubes still, even though it's old technology, they are still very useful. There's a lot of old technology I think still does things a little bit better than what new technology does, which part of my hands-on demonstration is going to talk about that. But in the military, realm and especially in defense what you have is you have enemies you're going to be fighting against and they're going to be jamming technology and so you're going to have to produce communications that have the power to overcome jamming and also the high frequencies. They talked about that a lot of the frequencies even in the microwave range are becoming crowded now and with all the electronic devices out there they're going to have to go way up into the millimeter band and to go up into the millimeter band and produce really high power you can't do that easily with solid state. The kind of power and wattage you need is going to melt down any kind of electronic circuitry based on solid state. So what you do is you go and use a tube type of device. For those of you that don't know, it looks something sort of like a funny looking light bulb or a glass tube with metal pieces in it. And when I was a kid, you would uh, turn on the radio or something like that. And if you look in through the back, it would look like these little glowing things lighting up with these orange colors and stuff like that. Kind of cool, but it produced a, a heck of a lot of heat too. But Old technology can be just as good as new technology. I'll put the picture up of the, the basic design they're talking about to be able to do this, but using old technology also, and uh, I remember back that they talked about that they were laughing at the Russians for still in the 1960s and 70s using tube technology and a lot of their military equipment. Well, they weren't doing that to be foolish or doing that to uh, try to save money. They were doing that to be EMP resistance. That's an electromagnetic pulse. Transistors get fried. If you shoot up a nuclear device and detonate it way up in the air, it does not harm any buildings or people or anything like that if it's far enough up. But what it can do is it can fry electronic devices with a, a huge amount of voltage and uh, an electromagnetic pulse. will just basically render cars and things like that. Anything that runs in solid state, it'll, it'll render it useless. But you use the old style tubes and they're pretty much immune to it, at least in the tests that they've done. So part of this might be the fact that DARPA wants to switch back to more use of tubes too, even though it doesn't mention this in this article, it mentions mostly the anti-jamming effects of having a focused high power signal, but I think it could be too, just uh, to actually harden the things. And if you want to know that uh, tubes are still being used, though, they're used in one of the appliances if you use a microwave oven, that still uses tube technology for that, and a lot of the communication satellites the same thing. To produce the high kind of power focused beams to communicate, you need uh, tube technology still. So I'm going to take the camera off the stand here and I'm going to show you my little hands-on demonstration here of why I think sometimes older technology can be just as good or better than new technology. Here is your selection. Okay, here we have a nice selection of wrenches, modern day crescent wrenches, modern day adjustable wrenches. Crescent's a, a brand name, but most people call them, but they're just basically adjustable wrenches. And here we've got some older style adjustable wrenches. And right in the middle is my demonstration model. This is a one inch bolt, which uses a one inch, one and a half inch drive to actually turn the nut. Let's see with new modern technology what we've got here. Now obviously that's a pretty small wrench. Not gonna work. So let's size it up. Let's go up to this one. This one's open all the way. Gets pretty, pretty close here. Gets pretty close. Okay, let's go up to the next size here. This is a 10 inch. That was an eight. Here's a 10 inch. What are we gonna do here? Oh my gosh misses by just a fraction. Well, let's let's step up to the 12 incher here and see what we're going to do. What? All the way open? We can't even with a 12 inch wrench. We can't even get that thing to turn. What do we got going here? Let's step up to the 15 inch. Okay, here we can do it with the 15 inch. That works. We got a fifth so we got to go up to a 15 inch wrench to get this to work. Let's go back to the 1930s. These are all 1930s era tools. Let's just, I won't go through step by step by step. Let's go up to the biggest one here. Same as the biggest one over there. Nope. Still doesn't make it with a 12 incher. Even back in the 1930s, they hadn't figured that out. But what we could do, made by the Crescent Company, regular monkey wrench, and look at there. A monkey wrench that is actually 
smaller in size for the wrench here that doesn't work and probably about equivalent even slightly smaller than this one here that doesn't work the 10 incher so how about that or we could even do it this way let's go back to the turn of the century now I'm not exactly sure these things were made between about best I can find online is 1880 to around 1920 and then uh, this is the Coase wrench company and then they also made other ones that weren't made by Coase all the way up to the 1950s and some people say 1960s this was actually it was manufactured by uh, other companies besides but let's take a look at it paid a total of three dollars for this one and I think two dollars for the other one at a flea market so let's go with this and see what we got here oh look at there in fact it fits really well it the, the jaws actually can let me move it up a little bit here the jaws can actually enclose the whole nut there no danger of rounding it off whereas the smaller one it would probably still work but it doesn't quite you want it to you know it doesn't quite engage the jaws all the way so we're talking about old style technology and I believe the patent for these style wrenches was given out around 1840 1841 if you look up online for a screw adjustable wrench so yeah old technology oh and here's a couple other things I just picked up too this is an actual pipe wrench and how you know it's a pipe wrench instead of a monkey wrench it flexes it's got a spring action there and it's got sharp jaws made to clamp down on a piece of pipe or something whereas this is a monkey wrench because it's got flat jaws it doesn't flex to clamp down on anything it's just basically a sideways style of adjustable wrench and then I just I picked this up too because I got a good deal on it I actually got all of these wrenches that you see right here from this one all the way to these thirty dollars for the whole set in excellent shape so yeah my argument is from the 1930s all the way up to modern day era still couldn't solve the problem of dealing with something like this until you went up to monster style, style wrenches which to me is kind of unacceptable should have been a little bit better solution to that so to let you know sometimes old technology is actually quite a bit better than new technology depending on the application so that's it for this week take care everybody I will catch you next week